All right, 39. How is the process of boiling different than evaporation? And then what determines the temperature at which a substance will boil? So two big ideas here. Boiling occurs throughout the entire sample. It's kind of an equal opportunity for all particles to get a chance to escape. Whereas evaporation only happens at the surface. Now, evaporation will happen at any temperature. Obviously, it'll happen faster if the stuff is warmer and more particles are getting the amount of energy they need to evaporate. Boiling happens at a specific temperature. And it's that temperature at which the vapor pressure of a liquid, the, part, the pressure of the particles colliding, is equal to the surrounding air pressure. Remember, air pressure is pushing down. Let me draw a little picture over here. Here's the air pressure, and vapor pressure is pushing up. It's only when these two arrows become equal that the molecules can actually start boiling off. If the vapor pressure is lower than the atmosphere, then this can't get a chance yet to boil. It's only when they're equal that it actually is boiling. So we heat things up to give them more and more and more energy. And as we heat them up, the arrow, this arrow will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then eventually it'll hit the magic temperature where it's got enough energy. And finally, these two arrows are equal. Now for water, that happens at 100 degrees Celsius, and that's at sea level. That's at this pressure equaling 1 atm, 101.3 kilopascals, or 760 millimeters of mercury. That's 100 degrees Celsius. Um, Okay, 40. It says at sea level, water boils at 100 degrees, and then would water boil at higher or lower temperatures at a higher altitude? Well, we've kind of talked about this already. As you go to a higher altitude, there's fewer air molecules, so that means the atmospheric pressure isn't as much, so you only need to give it a little bit of energy to match the vapor pressure and the atmospheric pressure. If you're down here closer to the surface of the Earth, the atmospheric it, atmospheric pressure is greater and therefore you have to give it more energy to get the two to match. So if you're up top, fewer particles, lower atmospheric pressure, less uh, energy you need to give it to get that vapor pressure to finally meet and then it'll boil. So at higher altitudes it'll boil at lower temperatures because it doesn't need as much energy. Number 41, indicate a letter that's associated with each of the following. All right, the first thing I would do if you get a graph like this is decide is the temperature going up or down as you go across uh, or over time. So as we go this way, it looks like the temperature is getting less. So we're talking about a cooling curve. Okay, so that's the first thing you need to keep in mind. So there's usually going to be two flat sections. The two flat sections indicate the times during which a phase change is occurring. Remember, flat section starts with the F sound, so does phase change. Flat sections are phase changes. So the phase change up here is going to be either condensing or when you take away energy from a liquid, it freezes or solidifies. So we're going to ask ourselves, which one is it? Well, at a higher temperature, it's going to go from a gas to a liquid, so this is condensing. And over here, we're going from a liquid, this whole uh, slanted line is a liquid, then we go through a phase change, and this is called freezing, and then we get into a solid state, and the temperature of the solid could drop theoretically all the way to absolute zero. It won't actually hit absolute zero, but in theory it could. So take a look at the letters here. These are things that you should be able to pick up and, and discuss. Okay, let's do the last question on this page. It says, you should be able to explain the relationship between gas pressure and the following variables. First question, why is it easy to compress gas? Because there's lots of space between particles. If here's one particle, the next closest particle is 10 of these, that's that distance away. So they're each pretty far apart from each other. I don't know how many I did there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. So the next closest particle would be over here if you have one here and you're comparing. Obviously gas particles are much smaller so the distance is much closer relatively speaking but that's still quite a distance for neighboring particles. They're not up against each other like they are in a liquid and a solid. There's lots of space between gas particles and if we wanted to we could put more gas particles in a smaller container and force them to get closer than that but at normal atmospheric pressure and temperature, they're that far apart.
All right. 43. What volume will one mole of any gas have at STP? We already covered this. 22.4 liters. And what does STP stand for? Standard pressure. Make sure you know those values. Standard temperature. Know those values. 44. 44 is kind of imagining what would happen if you add uh, or change some of the situations here. So the first one says, if you add more gas to a sample, what will it, what will happen? Well, we've got number of moles. Remember, N stands for number of moles or particles. And P is for pressure. So if we add more particles, the pressure is going to increase. So number of particles goes up and pressure goes up. Remember, this is kind of like saying, if I blindfold you guys all and tell you to run around the room like crazy, how many collisions are you going to make? Collisions is like pressure. And then I say, well, I'm going to take you guys and double the number of kids in here. Well, then now the number of kids goes up, and so does the number of collisions. So that's what we call a direct relationship. One goes up, the other goes up. All right, the temperature was decreased. So temperature is going to go down. What happens to pressure? Well, imagine having you guys run around the class at regular speed and then having you walk slowly. If you walk slowly, the pressure is going to decrease because pressure is collisions, and you're going to make fewer pressure or fewer collisions. Same thing with gas particles. So the slant will go like that. That is also a direct. When temp goes down, so does pressure. Flip side is if temp goes up, if I have you run full speed, so will number of collisions. So then we would go up like that. But either way, it's the same angle, same slope, and it's a direct relationship. C. The volume of the container was increased in size. So suddenly the volume went up. What happens to pressure? Well, imagine how many collisions would happen if I put you guys all in the gym. Now you've got a much bigger volume, much bigger space. You're going to make fewer collisions. So collisions is going to be lower. So we're going to go up high on the y-axis and over here close to the point of origin on the x-axis. And then if we do the flip side, what if we say we're going to put you all in a tight little closet and have you run around, then you're going to make more collisions. So pressure goes up. So we put a point here. And actually, we end up putting all the points in between, and we end up like a smooth curve, just like that. So this is an inverse relationship. One goes up, the other one goes down. Still, they still affect each other, but they affect each other in the opposite way.